But this video is going to show you how you make a quick decision maker. Now this is a really uh, cool and easy application to make and there's a lot of learning outcomes. Let's jump into it. So Google Scratch MIT. Create new. All right, let's choose a different costume. Choose Anina. Shrink her down a bit. And step backdrop. Okay, and back to Sprite and script. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to get is the user's input and they're going to ask a question. Uh, so we could set that up by having the sprite say, should I dot dot dot, we'll have an event to trigger that off. So at the moment that's going to look like this. And the question that the user inputs is going to be responded with a yes, now or maybe. So to get user input, we actually need this block. So we'll get rid of that one. Should I? And you see this one gives you the, the input box. And here is where you type up, have another bowl of ice cream. And when you hit enter, it looks like it disappears. But Scratch keeps it in this variable here called answer. So we can use that. And when we're finished testing, then we just simply untick that one there. Okay, so we've got the user input and we need to respond with a yes, no, or maybe. So yes, no, and maybe are really three variables. And we've done some videos before where we store data into variables. So variables are a container to store your values. But what happens if you want to have all your variables in one place? Uh, so the next level is arrays in most programming languages, but Scratch calls them the lists. So if you go to data, so you can make a variable, but we're going to make a list. And this list name is going to be choices. Okay, so we've got the empty array over here and we're going to add things to it. So we're going to add, yes. So we're going to click on the green flag after the prompt box, yes gets added to it. And then we'll want no, or maybe. Now, if I run this again, the problem is that that old one is going to be retained. So I'll show you what I mean. We've got the old one. So what we need to do is when the green flag is clicked, delete all of the variables inside the array. Okay, so now what we need to do is pick a random one. So we could we could have say item one of choices, which is going to be yes. Go to the shops. It's going to say yes because we've hard coded that in. So we want a flexible one here. We want to be able to pick one, two, or three randomly. Now Scratch has a built-in random function. So let's try that again. Should I have a bowl of ice cream? No. Oh, well, the computer got it wrong. I'll, I'll run it again. Okay, now the computer got it right. Thought I had written a, a bad program there. Okay, so this is just a simple, fun, interactive program. That's, that's a great, great place to start. Uh, so now let's personalize it a little bit. We've got, we've got it basically working, but what we want to do is have the application feedback what was put in there. So 
we want to do one where we can say, we'll do it in here. So you asked me, should I? Now we're going to cover a little bit of concatenation here. So I want to put this into this sentence so that it's flexible. So if we go to operators, we've got here where we can join two bits of text. You ask me, should I? And if we put that in here, let's see how this looks. Should I call them back? You ask me, should I call them back? My answer is, and it, should I call them back? You ask me, should I call them back? My answer is no. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. What we can now do is we can go to data and untick that one and in sensing untick that. Another bowl of ice cream. Yes, and it got it right again. All right, so now let's look at building this in JavaScript. Exactly the same concepts. The try it yourself window. All right, we're going to work in the body section here. We're going to delete that and run it and we're going to write a script and close the script. Now of course if you know um, how to create your own HTML on your on your desktop then by all means do that. Okay so let's let's think it through. We want to get the user input. We can do that with a prompt. Let's have a look what we did here. Ask should I and wait and that variable was called answer. Okay so variable answer equals prompt okay inside the curly braces should I now let's just have a look at this so to output it we can go document dot write and put in the name of this variable Okay, so that's working as we would hope. Okay, so it's it's given null, so let's see if we type something in. Should I? Okay, or another bow, that's fine. So far, this is working. We want to create an array with three variables in it. The variables of yes, no, and maybe. So to create an array, variable choices equals and we've got the square brackets semicolon to finish so same as what we did here we made a list called choices we've got an array called choices so we've got a string of text called yes separate that with a comma another string of text called no separate that and another string of text maybe if we now right to the document choices it will give us all three let me show you how that works so at the moment the output has no regard to the input the output is giving all three options but what I wanted to show you here is if we put the curly braces here uh, now something I should clarify is that in JavaScript and most programming languages, your first item in the array is 0, 1, and 2. Whereas in Scratch, it's 1, 2, and 3. But in JavaScript, it's 0, and I can demonstrate that if I put in what is the 0 element. If I'm 0, 1, it's going to be no. And if I put in three, and if I put in three, uh, 
Okay, well, well, I can tell you why that's happened. <laughs> I just didn't listen to my own self. Zero, one, two. Well, again, I'll leave that in there because that's a good learning. What we want to do here is put in a, a way to make a random option. So here we had a random function to be able to grab a random number. So we have to build one. So we'll call this ran, uh, variable rand choice equals now this is a little bit complicated but bear with me first of all we need math dot random okay so let me show you what the output of rand choice will be now yeah i'm just going to comment out that one for now so if you have a look over in the output, rand choice is a float number, decimal, and it's between zero and one. It's never quite one. So if we want a random number to be more, like say between zero and uh, five, so just look over here for now. Okay, so that's that's the first part, and then we need to wrap all of that up in another math function, math dot floor, one brace here, another brace there, and that just rounds it down. So now we've got random numbers between zero and four, one less than this number. If we wanted to go between and 0 and 10. That's how we would do that. So we want to go 0, 1, 2. So we want random number between 0, 1 and 2. Okay, so that is working. So now, if we go choices, and instead of going zero to get yes, one to get no, or two to get maybe, we'll put in this variable. Okay, yes, no, or maybe. All right, so that's the hardest part done. So now we have to sync up the input to the output. So the input is answer. So then we can just document dot write who asked me should I plus answer. Let's have a look at this. Should I have another bowl of ice cream? You asked me, should I have another bowl of ice cream? And it's responded, but it's all, it doesn't look, look very good here. So what we want to do is put in a break. So we get and two quotes and let's try that. Should I go? You asked me, should I go? Maybe. So we could dress that up to my answer is plus a random option of the array called choices. have another bowl of ice cream you asked me should I have another bowl of ice cream my answer is no better ask this again should I have another bowl of ice cream no okay well maybe I shouldn't um, so there you have it a cool little uh, decision maker and it looks like it actually makes good choices for you <laughs> which has surprised me a bit now you could dress this up yeah you could save this to notepad 
and add some CSS styling. Yeah, that, that's sort of beyond the scope of what I wanted to get into. I just wanted to lay the groundwork of the uh, the process of what how an array works and how you can create a random a variable within that array and have it present so that it looks like the application is talking to you. Okay, all right, well, I will wrap this video up and thank you for watching.